Australia's air evacuation mission in Afghanistan appears to have begun with military flight leaving the country's airspace. Let's go live now to Jonathan Lee, who's been following this. Jonathan, what is going on here is closely uh, guarded. Obviously, it's a very sensitive mission, but what do we know so far? Yeah, good morning to you, Laura. It's worth pointing out that these are defence or, or military experts who have been talking to us at this stage. It certainly hasn't been confirmed by the government. They're being very cautious and playing their cards close to the chest. But it appears that an operation began last night, a little after midnight, with an Australian Hercules. That's a smaller cargo plane uh, leaving or departing from the United Emirates. United Arab Emirates. It headed towards Afghanistan. On board that, they have a transponder which they turn on and off when they come in and out of certain airspaces to prevent enemy from knowing where they are. It remained on as they flew in through Pakistan. They turned it off. They went dark, as they say, when they went into Afghanistan and descended into uh, Kabul Airport, Hamid Karzai Airport there. Australians, we understand, some Australians were told to be waiting on the ground. Some of those that were trying to get out, it appears they left Afghani airspace uh, a little over two hours ago. Uh, they uh, remained dark as they exited uh, that Afghan airspace. It takes them 40 minutes to get back into the Pakistani airspace. They turn their transponder back on and they're currently heading back towards the United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. at the moment, towards a military air base there. So it's all, as we say, a closely guarded secret at the moment. This is the smaller Hercules. We also understand that two Globemasters are going to be part of this operation. That's a, a much, much larger aircraft capable of taking far more people. We saw the United States using that the other day when they got those 640 people in. There have been also been karma scenes at the airport there overnight, Laura. These are all happening uh, under the cover of darkness. It's when the United States does most of its airlifting uh, throughout Afghanistan when things are safer. It hasn't just been Australia. We, I also understand the Indians have uh, uh, repatriated people or evacuated people, so too the Germans. There's also been another flight. It was a Luxembourg flight. I understand that was being done through a sort of a conglomerate, a, a European, a NATO operation trying to get people out at the moment. So it's a hive of activity while it is dark over Afghanistan. And obviously people are trying to get as many citizens, guards, mm. interpreters out as they can. Laura? Yeah, Jono, it's just gone 4.30 a.m. in Afghanistan. So if this mission has been complete, they certainly did it in the cover of darkness. Uh, this is a t tough question, I know, but you don't know how many or an indication of how many people got on that flight, do you? It, look, it is being reported that it's only a small number of people they've been able to uh, evacuate. If they're going to be doing larger airlifts, they would certainly be using the Globemaster, mm. not the Hercule itself. It can't take nearly as many people, but the Prime Minister has made the point in the last 24 hours, as we're about to hear, that the Australians simply can't get everyone out. Despite our best efforts, I know that support uh, won't reach all that it should. On the ground, events have overtaken many efforts. We wish it were different. Yeah, there are many hundreds of people, Laura, we're obviously trying to evacuate at this stage. This is all being done in consultation with our, uh, with our defence allies, specifically the United States at the moment. We would no doubt be working around them, but this is a very, very narrow window of opportunity to try and get as many people out as they can, Laura. Indeed. Jonathan Lee, thank you.